Even though slavery around the world has been abolished for over a hundred years, most of us are aware that the problem still exists. I mean, we hear about sex trafficking and we hear about children being abducted to be child soldiers, but do you really know how uh, prevalent this problem is? If you're at all like me, you'd rather not think about it. But today, we will think about it. And that's exactly where we begin with how prevalent this problem is. Joining me now is the coordinator of the Brazilian Pastoral Land Commission Campaign Against Slave Labor, Brother Xavier Plaza. Welcome, brother. So you're a French Dominican friar. How did you end up in, in Brazil working for the Pastoral Land Commission? Um, it happened that in the 80s, uh -huh. I got the opportunity to visit Brazil. Um, in that time, Brazil was uh, recovering from almost 20 years of uh, military regime. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had uh, the uh, sad task to take back, to, to bring back to Brazil the body of uh, a friar, a Dominican friar, okay. who had uh, suicide in France mm -hmm. after uh, being badly tortured in Brazil okay. in the beginning of the 80, 80s. Right. This opportunity um, I used to visit um, friends of mine who were already working at the Pastoral Land Commission mm -hmm. in the north of Brazil in a very conflictive uh, region where the colonization of rainforest was being done through uh, radical violence against right. uh, the small peasants who were living in this place, uh -huh. against indigenous communities. And uh, the result was uh, a lot of uh, conflicts, evictions, deaths. And in that time, the CPT, which had been created a few years before, was uh, extremely busy uh, dedicating all its energy uh, in supporting the poor, uh, helping them to stand up and uh -huh. to request respect for their rights, for their dignity. In that contest, I, I must uh, confess that I was so uh, impressed that I couldn't uh, go back, come back to my country uh, without thinking, what about go there? So hold on a second, sorry, so the CPT is the commission, the Pastoral yes, Lands Commission. Yes, it's the, 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 the acronym is Brazilian in, in Brazil, acronym, in, yeah. in Portuguese. Is it a government agency no. or is it a church agency? Church agency. It, it was created by the uh, Bishop Conference okay. uh, during under the military regime as one of the unique spaces where it was possible to discuss about right and justice and to organize the defense of the poor. So that's their focus, is yeah. to, to work with the poor, with the peasants, to, to help, I guess, social justice work. Yeah. Uh, what did you discover once you started working with the CPT in terms of, I suppose you can call it nicely forced labor, but we can also call it slavery? Yeah. When I came to Brazil, I didn't know that I should 
uh, meet with this reality. And in that time, it was still a, a, a period in Brazil when uh, the Brazilian authorities were denying the reality of slavery. A few voices from church, from CPT, one of them was a bishop, uh, was uh, denouncing the situation, how mm -hmm. the forest, the rainforest was being cut through uh, exploitation of enslaved workers taken from the far uh, mm -hmm. northeast region of Brazil to the Amazon. Uh, I realized this situation uh, a few years after when all colleagues from the Pastoral Land Commission in the front areas mm -hmm. of uh, expansion of agriculture in Amazon rain rainforest told us, guys, you cannot be out of this problem. Those who are right. enslaved in origin are coming from your origin. But in origin, it was something like an invisible process. Right. And we discovered it. How similar is the situation that you encountered in Brazil with the situation that we hear from other countries uh, in terms of the, the people who find themselves in those situations that they are being forced? You can say that uh, slave labor, modern day slavery, is almost always about migrant, about, about poor people, uh -huh. about those who have no alternative to refuse any offer of job of a job mm -hmm. and for this are uh, taken to distant places mm -hmm. where they have no support from anybody right uh, and where they may be exploited without any chance of uh, uh, resisting mm -hmm. because they are uh, put in a situation situation of vulnerability of inferiority uh, they are dispossessed of the documents, of, uh, they have no pay, they are under threats, they are isolated. Mm -hmm. In the rainforest, geographically isolated means uh, a very strong uh, Cause, reality. Because there's nothing you, there. Sometimes you, you arrive on the, far, on the spot where you will have to cut the forest, and the last 200 kilometers were by plane or right. by Right, so you can't sheep. run away. Or uh, how to run away. So, so the idea, again, so again, to, to just to put it into perspective, because I can understand how we can say that it's forced labor, but you would go as far as saying that it's not, it's slavery, they're, 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 yes. they're the held captives, they're sometimes not paid. Sometimes they are captive. They are captive, and th the chain is not the antique chain, Right. it is the debt. Yes. They are indebted. Mm -hmm. against the, the gato, the contractor, or the subcontractor, the farmer, because all the expenses he had to take them to the forest, yes. he, will he will have to pay back, yes. and he can't afford it. So in, you, you take the, the modern day slavery in India, in Bahrain, in Africa, yeah. in Central America, in Canada, it's in the United States, the chain is the debt. The debt, and, and I'm, I'm intrigued by what you say to the fact that they, it can only work if you remove them from their, where they have their support systems and bring them somewhere else. I, I, what do you say to people, because, I mean, I grew up in Latin America. Mm. This has been going on for a long time. Mm. And some people would say, well, it's better for them to be working even though they're working on their horrible conditions. That's better than not having a work. Yeah. This is a kind of chantage mm? <laughs> okay. uh, that we listen to. Uh, frequently in Brazil also uh -huh. from our politicians. Also those politicians who say, you are claiming again the degrading conditions of mm -hmm. work, of uh, housing they meet in the forest, but do you think it's possible to give them a three stars hotel yeah. you know, on this farm? And look at these people, they are poor people, they already live uh, in tents, in barracks. Yeah, they don't Why know the should I offer them more comfort than they have in their village? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they are justifying the misery they are imposing by the misery these people are st already living. Right. This is unacceptable. I mean, the fact that they're working, they should be compensated for the work that they're doing. Whether it means a three-star hotel or not, I mean, the fact that they can't even go home in some cases. Just to summarize this part, so these people, they're poor, 
they're desperate. Are there any other? Uh, they are landless in a country like Brazil, landless. which has so many lands to share, and where the concentration of land is one of the champion of, in the world. Are they uh, uneducated? Uneducated, illiterate. Illiterate. Yes, forty percent of them are illiterate. So those are the people whom that are preyed on. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a little break here right now, um, but it's not a long break, so don't go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to continue this discussion, and in particular, we're going to uh, look at some practical things that you and I can do to help. So stay tuned. Let us know your perspective. Email us at perspectives at saltandlighttv.org or reach us by mail, perspectives at Salt and Light Television, 114 Richmond Street East, Toronto, Ontario, M5C1P1 or call us toll free at 1-888-302-7181. Let your perspective be heard. Desde os meus 18 anos de idade, aqui na região do Pará, trabalho em fazenda, roçando juquira. Eu estava lá perto de um posto, quando chegou um cidadão para mim trabalhar na fazenda dele. Quando eu cheguei lá, não era roço, não era plantação de capim, ele me botou para trabalhar numa calvoeira, é, carregando uma estoura mais ou menos de 40, de 50 a 60 quilos para jogar em cima do carro. Coisa absurda, coisa que é para maquinar, ele usa o ser humano, que você fica praticamente arrebentado. Aí eu passei 60 dias e aprontei 10 gaiolas. Meu dinheiro é mil reais. Aí ele foi e me deu 100 reais. Aí eu falei para ele, moço, isso aí é serviço escravo. Ele falou para mim, disse, não, o que tu quer dizer com isso? Tu quer dizer que tu vai dar queixa? Direito de Maranhão, isso aqui é um, é um tiro de, de uma espingarda calibre 36 que eu tenho lá no meu barraco. Aqui pode faltar é, é, feijão para o trabalhador, mas o cartucho para matar um aqui não falta. It was a clip from the film Bound by Promises, a film about slave labor in contemporary rural Brazil, produced by the Pastoral Land Commission of Brazil. So you explained a little bit about what the commission does, but specifically with this forced labor situation, what is the kind of work that you have been doing? The first step is welcoming the worker who ran away from the farm okay. in order to set his claim. Uh -huh. He needs support. He needs healing, mm -hmm. he needs security, and he needs that his claim be taken to the authorities in order to investigate uh, the situation on the farm. Okay. And there is a special mobile squad in Brazil which was created in 1995 by the government specialized in rescuing workers uh, in condition of slavery. So we have to pressure the government so that the, this mobile squad uh, quickly go to, the, to okay. the, the farm. Do you have support from the government? Yes. Uh, after 20 years of <laughs> bargaining with the government who was not uh, keen to acknowledge mm -hmm. that modern day slavery was existing, during 20 years they treated us as right. communists. Uh -huh. uh, since 95, the Brazilian uh, official position changed. They acknowledge and they decided to address the problem. But in the beginning it was in a very uh, insufficient manner. Right. Uh, only rescuing workers. Mm -hmm. We could say uh, free to free workers from slavery, it looks like combating slavery, but it is not eradicating slavery. Right. Because the roots of slavery are much deeper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These people need a profound, a deep uh, reforms, uh, structural reforms. Right. One of them is the land reform. They need access land to make their living. They need access education. They need ad access health. Another uh, important root of modern slavery is uh, the greed. The greed which is the main motor which... Uh, of the employer. Of the employer. Uh, exploiting slave uh, it's only justified by a major profit right. than the 
competitors. Well, let me, can I just ask you about that? Because I can see how you can have campaigns to educate the workers or even go in and rescue them. But how do you even go into a landowner's property to talk to the workers if... No, we, we don't do, do this. Uh, you probably we, can't. We go to the places where the subcontractors and the, or the landowners go to entice workers. Okay, so you So we identify the, the source communities and we try to have uh, uh, to organize awareness raising among uh, these communities. We try to train uh, social leaders in the social movements. In the communities. The schools, the teachers, in order that uh, a, a network of vigilance may, might be organized in that community. Is the work, can it be dangerous for you? From time to time, it has been. Uh, currently, I am not in danger. Mm -hmm. And we try to organize or, or work in a very strategic and prudent manner right. uh, in order not to expose unnecessarily. But uh, sometimes we are tackling uh, uh, big farmer, yeah. uh, big farmers who was, are politically connected, and, powerful, yeah. and uh, it's not that easy, of course. So once, let's say, a worker uh, runs away, is, is it easy for them to find you? And what do you do with them? How do you support them afterwards? It's easy to find us in a certain way because we have uh, uh, a reputation in Brazil for or more than 30 okay. years of so supporting people know them. What CPT is. We are we are reliable for the workers. Mm -hmm. They know that uh, here at CPT they may have confidence. Uh, we have uh, disseminated among the workers this uh, yeah. this brochure with uh, a small story when they, they may right. recognize their own situation and find where to call to us. Call you. Uh, this has been a, a, an important mean for them to fetch us. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. What we do also is uh, uh, give visibility to the problem, mm -hmm. multiplying events, uh, informations. Um, we also organize uh, pressure over the local authorities and the federal authorities in order to expand mm -hmm. the action against levy. Yeah. Okay, so for people like me, and I know that, that the problem exists in North America, I know it exists here in Canada. One example is migrant workers, and we've, had, we've talked about that in, in this show as well. But what is something that people here can do? Other than, I mean, I know people talk about boycotts and using free trade products, and maybe that's something that's important to do, but is, that, is the work that we can do, the help that we can give you, limited to that? Is there something more that we could do? Oh. But it's the first step. Uh, we are connected to these problems. Uh -huh. uh, first is uh, uh, to understand that we are not out of this problem. This is not an exotic problem. It's a problem which is connected to me, to us, through the global economy, which takes to us the product of slavery every day. My, the coffee, iPod, uh, yeah. the coffee, Chocolates, the leather, the chocolate, diamonds. the meat, yeah. the charcoal, the iron, the steel. We can do something because we are consumer, because we are elector. We can uh, so politically we can do politically something. we can question our politicians. What are you doing? Are you supporting the efforts of the international community to abolish human trafficking and slavery? Are you supporting the efforts of the Canadian community? Mm -hmm. For example, this uh, Catholic organization which organized my visit these days, Development in Peace, yes. Peace, how are they supported by the Brazilian uh, population, by right. the Brazilian government? Mm -hmm. uh, is, it, uh, is it possible to do more? Mm -hmm. Probably. Yeah. Uh, we are, uh, as a Pastoral Land Commission directly supported by uh, Development and Peace. So uh, I know that when I work on the ground against slavery, uh, there is some way uh, a Canadian contribution in my work. So if Canadians can support the Canadian Organization for Development and Peace, which in turn supports the work that exactly. you directly in Brazil, exactly. and I guess other, they have great, great work that they do in other countries and around of the course. world as well. So that's very practical. But you're a supporter of boycotts. Then you would say that if, yes, if, of course. if I don't in, buy, 
Brazil has invented a, a new mechanism of boycott called National Pact, Cooperative Pact Against Slavery. Uh -huh. And many big corporations, for example in Brazil, Walmart, is uh, signing on this pact in order to boycott, to cut any uh, supplier in their supply chain which who would be involved in slavery. Okay. And yeah. this is very important because you cut the profit. Yeah. Cutting the profit. And that's, that's what it's all about, yes. in a way, I guess, profit. Um, there's so much we could talk about. Um, I was going to ask you about, because you're a Dominican, that's the order of preachers, and I was going to ask you how that, but I think that you're preaching through your actions. And mm -hmm. as St. Francis said, I mean, that's the strongest way of preaching. We like to conclude our, our uh, discussions always by reflecting on the word. On, on scripture, we leave the last word to the one who is the word. Um, and so we'd like to uh, reflect on a passage from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. That's Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 and 2. Brother Xavier, would you like to leave us with a short reflection to conclude our conversation? I would like to record that this word of Isaiah is the first, one of the first words Jesus is proclaiming yes. when he says, this day has come. Mm. This day is today. This day when we need to free the slaves, to visit the prisoners. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, important to remember uh, this word connected to this when God says, a fast which pleases me mm -hmm. is to free the prisoner, is to uh, feed uh, those hungry, to visit the poor, to support those uh, disparate. Mm -hmm. I think this is our mission. There is, I think, modern day slavery is uh, something like a scandal against our faith. Yes. How can we uh, s live today uh, thinking we are Christian, we are son of God, if other 27 million people in the world are treated worse than animals. Mm -hmm. Wow, thank you. That's a message to keep in mind, but that's, uh, that's a bit of a challenge, so thank you for that. We've been speaking with Brother Xavier Plaza. He is the coordinator of the Brazilian Pastoral Land Commission Campaign Against Slave Labor. And if you want to find out more about the work that he is doing or about forced labor, slave labor around the world, you should visit freetheslaves.net. And if you want to find out more about the root causes of forced labor, you should visit the Canadian Organization for Development and Peace, devp.org, devp.org. Um, once again, Brother Xavier, it's been a pleasure uh, speaking with you. Thank you for bringing this important topic uh, to us here today. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to watch uh, this episode again, you missed part of it, or, or to watch any Perspectives episodes, you can visit us at saltandlighttv.org slash perspectives. That's where we post all our shows. And remember to join our discussion on Facebook. That's where we post the question of the week. And you know we cannot do this show without your perspectives. So that's all for tonight. We'll see you next week. <laughs>